Figma silently dropped their dev mode MCP and it's truly amazing. I tried it and the results look really promising. As designers, most of us might be wondering, what is this MCP server all about? And do I really need to know about this? Well, it's a topic that has been going viral on LinkedIn, Twitter, and all these places. And it's for good reason. MCP basically stands for Modal Context Protocol. And it's like a bridge that lets AI actually take actions on tools with real context. I actually made a post on this recently recently on LinkedIn uh, with an analogy that might help you understand it better. So I'll leave a link to this post in the description below to check it out. So let's talk about the scenario before MCP and after MCP, right? So before MCP, if you wanted the AI to code a particular design for you, then you would have to screenshot it, upload it, and then the AI would basically have to make guesses on it, like the dimension, the spacing, the typography. It's all a guesswork that the AI does based on the visual feedback that it sees. And there enters MCP. So with MCP, this all changes. Now Figma can die directly share all these design specifications, every pixel measurement, every color value, every layout property, and a lot more, uh, even the constraints and everything that it uses directly with the AI tools. So there is no more guesswork. It tries to make it as close enough as possible. So with this, the AI just doesn't see design anymore. It understands the structural level itself. So it knows that your card component is probably 24 pixels padding, and it uses interfont, and the size is 16 pixel, and a lot more, right? So each and every pixel perfect detail is being shared with the AI. So it's like an actual blueprint that is being shared with the AI and the AI just has to code that. So I guess that helps you understand what MCP basically is. Uh, if you need more details, let me know. We can talk more about this in the upcoming videos. Uh, but jumping back to the video, now I'm going to show you how to set this up, right? So setting this up is pretty straightforward. Figma has a guide where it shows you how to set up these on different uh, platforms. So you can connect it to the popular uh, AI coding editors like Claude, Cursor and so on. Uh, here I'm using a different AI code editor and I set up the process where I connected it uh, MCP to this. Let me show you how powerful it is with these three examples. I just picked uh, three different design samples so that I can show you how uh, it creates each of these uh, using AI. So all you have to do is just right click on the design that you wanted to generate. So right click on the design, the frame that you want and just copy the link to this particular selection and come to your AI code editor, be it Claude, be it anything. Just uh, paste this link and say create this particular design. I've already run for this particular design and you can see that this is the code it generated. This is just pure HTML and CSS and this is the result, right? So as you can see, this is uh, recreated it really well. This is all actual HTML and CSS code. And if you inspect it, you can see that the code is also very well generated since it's using the Claude LLM, right? So here you can see that it's also responsive since it is using the grid layout. And if you see the each of the cell level properties, it's trying to use exactly what is being used in Figma. So that is really uh, amazing because uh, all these properties are shared through the MCP with the particular AI code editor and that's how it's able to generate it very well. So moving on to the second example here we have a creative uh, hero section for a website. So I'm just copying this uh, link to this particular frame um, just saying a prompt well create this particular design and uh, do it with uh, HTML and CSS right. So just paste the link and it'll get started with creating the generating the code and here you can see that it's being generating all this code. So I think it's almost generated. So let's see how this looks. So as you can see, the logo is kind of messed up. It was not able to create the logo, but rest of the things it has done really well. And the best part is it's also trying to add some interactions to it. We did not mention any interactions in Figma, but as you can see, uh, it is trying to, uh, you know, create all the interactions as well. So this is what we have here. And then these are the images which it tried to, I guess, uh, recreate some new images here. So it's not using the exact images, but uh, that's uh, totally fine, right? We can just replace these images. But here you can see it has added uh, really good interactions uh, that I did not expect. So that is also a good thing. And here you can see there are some hover interactions as well. So now let's move on to the next one, which is a mobile design. So I'm going to copy this particular design here. Uh, I tried it with the left one that you see here, but here uh, none of the design elements are using auto layout and it actually didn't turn out to be really well. So I'm going to try it out with this one where everything is auto layout and everything is aligned very well. So let's copy this and uh, give it to the uh, AI code editor and I'm just going to say create 
uh, this particular uh, design, right? So just give it a prompt and give it the link that you just copied and it has started to generate everything. So let's see how this is going to turn out to be. So it's already generated. So I'm just going to pull out the design from here. There you go. We have the design. So as you can see, this is uh, a responsive design that it has tried to create. So I'm just going to set a particular uh, mobile breakpoint. So just setting a mobile breakpoint here. All right. That looks good. And as you can see, the header and the footer is fixed at the top and the bottom. That's really great. And here you can see the carousels and that's really good. It has added the interactions for the bottom menu and everything looks great, right? So even the scrolling worked and everything has kind of a hover interaction as well. So let's uh, go ahead and make some more tweaks, right? So I'm just going to make this carousel interactive. So we have a carousel on the top, like an image banner. Uh, I've just asked the AI to make this uh, interactive. So let's see how that has turned out to be. All right, there you go. Uh, this is also great. Uh, it is set on auto scroll and you can add actually scroll this as well. So that looks great. Uh, it has added some dummy data as well, which looks interesting. Considering this is an e-commerce example, it tried to add some relevant examples. And overall, this looks great, right? It tried to create it really well. And you can see the scrolling for these uh, horizontal cards also work. And you can see that there are some click interactions. So once you press on it, it is getting raised. So all these are cool interactions that the AI has tried to add based on the context that it has. Uh, none of these were given but the major part of it is that the ui is being generated really well so that's really amazing so there you go those are some examples that i tried and i feel the mcp hype is absolutely real so this is going to bring a shift in the design to development workflow and this is going to be real so do let me know what you think about this and are you excited about this or are you worried that ai is taking over everything let me know in the comments below what you think about this and as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you with another one